What's up guys, this is Bolesh from Racing Brick. In today's review I will show you a set that is the second member of the LEGO House exclusives. This is the 40502 brick molding machine. The first item in this series was the 40501 wooden duck set that I also reviewed. You can watch it by clicking on the link in the top right corner. A quick overview about the series. These sets are only available at the LEGO House in Billund. I know that nowadays it is very difficult to travel, so you can't really get these anytime soon unless you live nearby, but hopefully the situation will become better later this year, so more people will have a chance to visit the LEGO house. As you see, the set comes in a mid-sized box, there's the LEGO house logo on the front with the limited edition number 2 label, and of course the machine itself. On the back of the box there's an archive photo of the old molding machines in the LEGO factory, along with some details of the model and a snippet of LEGO's history. Now let's open the box. Just like the wooden duck set, it is sealed at the bottom and the top of the box opens like in the old days. The set has 1205 pieces, it will be available in the LEGO house from the 4th of March and the cost is 599 DKK which is roughly 80 euros. There are 14 numbered bags inside with the building process split into 8 phases, an unnumbered bag with mostly black plates and bricks, the manual and a tiny little sticker sheet. The manual has some interesting details about the history of injection molding at the LEGO group, facts and figures about the molding machines, and details about this exact model we will build. This molding machine can be found in the LEGO house in Billund, and it is identical to the machines found in LEGO production sites, but it has a specially designed mold that only contains 6 2x4 bricks and the production speed is much slower than usual. On the next pages there are some information about the LEGO bricks and then comes the building process itself split into 8 different phases. At the end of the manual you can see the part list as usual. Now let's start building. In bag 1 our first job is to lay some tiles, but it's actually not a representation of some wooden tiles as I thought for the first sight, but apparently the diamond plate covering the lower section of the machine. Here are two gauges and maybe valves I guess. Interestingly, the manual shows a previous version of this printed round 1x1 tile, and the part list shows the same. The version in the box, however, has the newer pattern that appeared only in two sets so far in 2021. One of them is the Porsche 911 set. After some brick stacking, here come some Technic pieces. This will become the conveyor belt, I think. I guess I will repeat this a couple of times, but apart from the historical facts and trivias, what I really really miss from the manual is some information about the machine itself, the parts and how it works exactly. We built a wall in this corner and a nice little bridge here at the front, and we are finished with bag 1. Bag 2 starts with more instruments and the bucket as well. Time to give the beast some legs. Walls are being raised constantly and the conveyor belt is almost fully covered now. This section has some cool snot building techniques used. The rest of back 2 is completed fairly quickly, we have some tiles to do at the end again and we are done. Back 3 is all about the 1x1 one one headlight bricks. We have to use dozens of it to build the inside of the machine and we actually have no clue about what we are building. These doors did not exist in line previously, they are exclusive to this set at the moment. I guess they could be used to create toolboxes for your CN garage maybe. This module is connected with Technic pins to the main build and it's a bit tricky to push in place properly, but once it's done we are finished with this bag. With bag 4 we build the heart of the machine with the molds. Here you can see how the 6 2x4 bricks are recreated with the red jumper plates. The mechanism that will push the parts of the molds together takes shape. Here are the Technic pieces that will drive the mechanism. There's a big window installed that won't actually show much here. Once the module is finished and it's working properly, it can be put in place. The moving section should be aligned to fit in that slot to ensure a smooth operation. With bag 5 we add first this section with a window to the other end of the machine. Then two more line doors go to the back side and a sliding window to the front. Two similar sliding windows go to each side and we are done with bag 5. With bag 6 we build the core of the machine with a lot of jumper plates. This item goes from 2 stud wide to 3 stud wide using the jumper plates. Now this is something that I did not see often, stacking jumper plates. What can be the reason why not using simple 1x2 plates? 
I'm sure it has to do something with the optimal usage of parts, but the set actually has 1 by 2 standard plates in black, so this method does not reuse the number of unique parts in the set anyway. It has to have another reason. After adding two quite complex lightsabers, the unit is placed in the machine. We stick to the Star Wars theme, as this moisture vaporator is added as the final touch from this phase. Yet another interesting usage of jumper plate stacking at the beginning of pack 7, as we are building the other side of the mold. Once it is in place, you can see how it works. Here comes the only sticker in the box, as we are building the control panel. We finish the top of the machine, and the black sausage is added as well, it must be the secret ingredient to the perfectly cooked Danish plastic bricks. We are at the final phase, after some colorful buttons, here comes four transparent antennas. Interestingly, two of them are clear, the other two have bubbles inside, I can't decide which should be the acceptable version here. This sub-assembly has an interesting way to connect to the main build. The final touch to the machine is this colorful lollipop, and then we go all black to build a stand. And after adding more than 100 different tiles, the stand is finished, and we can do the final assembly. Of course, it will work only if the legs are correctly placed, so here is the finished molding machine. It looks great and it has tons of details all around. The scale is roughly 1 to 12, as you can see it is definitely not minifigure scale. About the functional elements, there are sliding windows on both sides, the doors on the front can be opened to reveal the inner parts of the machine, and there are two doors at the back as well. The molding process can be simulated with the rod at the back. Interestingly, the stationary part of the mold has slots for the red tiny bricks, but thanks to the way it is constructed, they don't actually slide in those slots. I guess it was designed this way to make the movement smoother, but still show how the process is supposed to work. So I'm sure you would ask, how the machine works exactly? Well, this is the part that I really miss from the manual. I guess if you visit the LEGO house, then you have the opportunity to observe the real machine there yourself, and you can also ask the staff about it, but here I can only show you a video that was shared in the press package. The raw material travels through these pipes from the basement, then the granule goes into the hopper, which contains a dryer unit, so I was not that far with my moisture vaporator theory. And then it turns into a toothpaste-like material using heat and high pressure, and at the end, six 2x4 bricks are born in the injection mold. You can recognize more details from the build, like the red bucket used to collect the defective parts, or the gauges, valves, and pipes next to it. I guess this is the end of the conveyor belt of this specific machine, and then the bricks travel through other machines used for sorting and packaging, those are not included in the set. We get three printed tiles symbolizing the pack of six bricks in this box. Interestingly, they are brown instead of white, and there's a reason for that. LEGO will soon switch to paper bags at this machine as well, so this set already shows you how the pack of six bricks will look like in the near future. So, let's sum it up. I think this is obviously a display piece and not something to play with. Although it has some functional elements, they can be mostly used to take a look around in the machine and give you the possibility to explain to your friends how the machine works. At least if you did your homework and took a closer look at the real machine in the LEGO house, because the manual unfortunately won't help you in that, I wish there were more information about it. I also prefer to see more functional parts like a working conveyor belt for example, but I guess at this scale it was not possible to recreate. Anyway, it looks great as a display piece, and if you will have a chance to visit the LEGO house, then I'm sure building it afterwards will bring back great memories about the trip. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments, you can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my LEGO reviews and other LEGO RC videos. See you next time, bye bye!